right, I'm here with the Amanda Bergner. Uh, Amanda, could you kind of, uh, for our community, explain a little bit about what you do with your work at Johns Hopkins, who you work with, et cetera? Sure. So I am a genetic counselor at Johns Hopkins in the neurofibromatosis clinic. And some of the people that I work with are Dr. Jayshree Blakely and Dr. Alan Bellsberg. And we are... Um, we are running a clinic there primarily for people with NF1, NF2, and schwannomatosis. We have pediatric patients and adult patients, and our number one thrust is quality patient care, comprehensive quality patient care. Amanda, could you uh, discuss a little bit about the schwannomatosis database? What does that mean? You know, what do we expect to glean from that? What is its purpose, and, and how has it gone so far? Sure. The, the schwannomatosis database is a collaboration of people across the U.S. and around the world experts and researchers interested in schwannomatosis. And we really started the database because schwannomatosis is considered very rare. And so there really isn't a majority of patients at any one particular center. And having, you know, having a critical mass of patients is pretty important to make forward progress in research, particularly therapeutic trials. Well, we're really hopeful that we'll be able to have as many schwannomatosis patients and families register in the database as possible. So it's been created to be a platform for research. So there really isn't any specific research that's going to come out of the database, but it'll be a really powerful mechanism to connect families and patients who are interested in participating in research with researchers who are running trials. Um, one of the things that really can hold up research is being able to identify patients who are appropriate for studies, particularly in rare diseases where patients are spread out more around the country, around the world. And so this is a, um, a way to really be able to know where patients are located, particularly people who are interested in participating. And finding results. So my understanding is that we, again, that the database will hold information and then researchers will come to the database looking for people that are available for specific tests or, or studies, et cetera. Is that kind of correct? Right. So the database will have very um, limited information. It's actually designed to be what we call de-identified. So there, uh, there really isn't any risk to patients for entering their data because the data is so minimal that no one would know who anybody is based on it. So it really is going to be a tool for researchers to be able to locate patients and then contact their site to contact them about participating in various studies. So our biggest hope is that this is going to really be a platform to accelerate the research process in this field. So right now we have uh, a very few schwannomatosis patients around the world and we're trying to do our best to uh, coagulate, organize that group to s such that a, a researcher could come to one place as opposed to trying to go fish in many different Places. Right, so I think ultimately how this will work is that when a study is proposed, it'll end up being a collaboration between multiple sites. So people that are located, for instance, in California and in Boston and in Alabama and in England and in Paris and in Italy, who are all candidates for whatever the study is. And so all of those institutions would collaborate on the study. So not only is this potentially beneficial specifically for the research study that's ongoing, but it, it really has the potential to create long-lasting professional research collaborations. And when people work together on one project and it goes well, they often tend to work together on other projects. So we're really hopeful that this will stimulate research in this field as well. Um, for schwannomatosis patients, how do they know if they are in a database? How do they know, how do they get into this database? Yeah. So at I think really at every institution there's going to be a consent process, so patients would know that they're in the database because they would be asked to participate and need to sign a consent form, and then their physician would enter this minimal data into the database. So if people are interested, you know, the best thing to do is to speak directly with the person who is following them for schwannomatosis. Alternatively, um, people are always welcome to contact us as the main coordinating center at Johns Hopkins. And then we've been working with sites to help them get on board, people that are interested. We're also working to develop a mechanism to enroll patients who are being followed in places who might not want to participate as a site, but the patients are still interested in enrolling in the database. So that will soon become an option as well. Can they, how do they contact you? How can they contact you? So. I can give our phone number at the center. It's 410-955-2509. Also, you know, we can, it can be found on the website. So we have a website for this project. 
um, which is www.schwanomatosis.com. Thank you, CTF. <laughs> well, Amanda, thank you so much for your time and your work, and you know we will be looking forward to the progress that is to come from the Schwanomatosis database. So will we. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>